I was 18 or 19 years old when this happened, still living with my parents in Billings, Montana. We were hosting a foreign exchange student, Faye, a girl from China who was the same age as me. Her English was pretty good, so we became friends. Now, I'm a guy, but there was nothing going on between us. She was more like a little sister figure to me, seeing how she lived at my house and all. Anyway, the two of us snuck out one night to go to this party. We got home late, around 1am I think, and we both quietly walked up the stairs and tried not to wake my parents. Faye silently crept into her bedroom down the hallway, and I went inside mine and hopped into bed. I was so tired that I drifted off to sleep within minutes. I don't know what time it was, but I was awoken in the middle of the night by the sound of creaking in my bedroom. I woke up groggy, with my eyes tired from sleep, and scanned the room around me. The sound was coming from my closet door, which was slowly creeping open. There, emerging from my closet, was the dark outline of a human with a weird-shaped head. Now, I suffer from sleep paralysis from time to time, which means I often wake up with audio-visual hallucinations in the middle of the night. I quickly rationalized that the figure in my room wasn't real, and that the closet hadn't really opened. I was just in that place that's neither dream or reality. Even though I've had these experiences a lot of times in the past, it was still creepy to see the dark silhouette of a person looming out of my closet. I kept my eyes on the spectre as it slowly tiptoed to the end of my bed. It stopped, facing towards me, and began swaying from side to side. I closed my eyes, desperate to fall back to sleep and get rid of this nightmare creature at the foot of my bed. As I did, I heard its fake footsteps slowly backing out of my room towards the hall. Good, it would disappear soon, I thought. Then I heard the sound of my bedroom door carefully being closed. What the? Something wasn't right about this hallucination. It wasn't like all the others. Every time, the figure would just dissolve and fade away as reality took over, but this one legitimately just exited my room. Now, sure that I was fully awake, I decided to get up out of bed. I walked towards my closed bedroom door and quietly opened it. There, standing in the hallway, opening the door to Faye's room, was the same dark figure. It wasn't a hallucination after all. It was a man. A stranger in our house, creeping into my friend's bedroom. I let out a loud, hey, which of course startled the guy. He dropped something on the floor. In the dark, I couldn't make out what it was. I hit the hallway light switch on my left. The hall lit up. I could see him clearly now. His head wasn't weirdly shaped at all. He was wearing a mask, holding some sort of small club in his hand. On the floor by his feet was a small length of rope. From inside her room, I heard Faye let out a terrified scream. She must have woken up during the commotion. The masked man darted down our staircase. In all honesty, I had no idea how to react. I just stood there like a rabbit in headlights, totally shocked that this wasn't sleep paralysis after all. My father came storming out of my parents' bedroom at the far end of the hall. I screamed that a man was just in my room and that he was about to go into phase. He rushed back into his bedroom, came out with his firearm, and made his way down the stairs after the guy. We heard the roar of a car engine outside. The intruder had parked his ride somewhere near our house. I heard no shots, no shouting. My dad didn't make it outside fast enough to catch the guy or spot his plates. To this day, we still have no idea who he was. If he lived near to us, why he targeted us, nothing. The only time the house was empty that day was around 2pm, meaning this guy either snuck inside while we were at the party and my parents were sleeping, or he'd been hiding inside our house for around 12 hours, biding his time. From what the cops think, he came to get Faye, to knock her out with the club and tie her up, take her out to his car and drive off. Thing is, when he broke in, he hid in the closet in the wrong room. He stood at the end of my bed, trying to work out if I was Faye in the dark, probably thinking if he should bludgeon me or not. 
I have no idea what motivated the guy. Infatuation? Hatred? Who knows? But the fact that he brought rope and a cudgel with him, and hid silently inside our house for what must have been hours, leads me to think his intentions were pure evil. Faye moved back to China soon after that. I miss her, but I can't say that I blame her for leaving. I mean, wouldn't you? About three weeks ago, my mum told my brother and I this story. Sally is a lifelong family friend. She would frequently visit her friends and family in Oklahoma. We live in a small town in southern Ontario, Canada. So, Sally would drive. Sally would drive straight 20 hours at least overnight to get from our town to another small town. She did this to save money, and obviously she wanted to arrive as soon as possible. Now that you've heard the prelude, here's the story. About 30 years ago, she decided to head south for a visit. No big deal, she's done this a few times now. So she packs up and heads out. At some point, after driving about 14 or 15 hours, she started getting pretty tired. Being as it was probably the 80s, it was a little safer. So she decided that she would stop at a rest stop for the night to get some sleep and resume again first thing in the AM. She parks in a very well lit and busy rest stop. She parks right by the lights and felt at ease because there was an abundance of travelers stopping and going. She gets out of her car for a bathroom break, comes back and settles in her car. About then, an RV pulls up beside her and an elderly couple get out. The man asks her about coming from Canada they strike up a little conversation. Nothing odd. The couple just talk to Sally for a little bit. They tell her that they're driving from the south, going north, and they just needed to have a sleep for the night. They wanted to talk because they were unsure if the rest stop was okay to stop at. They say good night and good trip, and the couple head back to their RV. Sally locked her doors up and went to sleep. Two or three hours later, Sally woke up with a really unsettling feeling. She looks around. Nothing. A few people going in the stop. Parking lights are all on. She assumes she's just feeling bad because she's tired and her car isn't the best place to sleep in. After 10 minutes, she actually said that this feeling got worse and it was a jarring, queasy, uneasy feeling. She sits back and tries to shrug it off. This doesn't work, and apparently she had every red alarm and instinct telling her that she needed to go. She panics, starts her car and peels off. She doesn't care where, she just knew that she needed to get away from there. About 20 miles down the road, she finds a motel and gas station. She decides to see if she could get a room there for what little money she had. She converses with the person in charge. He cuts her a deal because he doesn't want to see a young woman driving alone late at night. She gets a key, pops in her hotel room, and sleeps for the night. No issues whatsoever. Around 9am, she wakes up, showers, changes clothes, and decides to relax for a few. She turns on the TV, and what she said was on it actually gave me chills. There was a breaking news story about an elderly couple who had been killed in the middle of the night. The news shows the RV that Sally was parked next to in the exact same spot at the exact same stop. She even sees the fast food drink cup that she dropped by accident that rolled under her car. Sometime during the night, a man broke into their RV and killed them, and then simply left. Presumably this all happened right before Sally had left. The man was never caught, and Sally, since then, stopped at hotels for the night and avoided rest stops. <laughs>